So, most of the time I like to leave my my uh, bikes just, just kind of stock if I'm just leaving all the other things that go with them stock. But, um, if I put exhaust on them or, or uh, separate air filters, take the air box off, then is when I see it as being necessary to rejet a carburetor so that it'll run right and you'll have a little bit more power. <laughs> and everybody knows we like a little bit more power. Now the way you do this, or the way that, the method that I use to do this, is by reading plugs. Now most of you should know what reading plugs is. But what you're going to look at here is I've got two plugs. Now this plug right here on this side, you can see it's black and it's wet and uh, that's never good. That means that you're getting too much fuel. And the plug on the other side you can see is kind of a tannish brownish color and uh, it's, it's fairly clean. So this is the optimal, optimal plug right here. The other extreme, and I don't have a plug that has a good example and I'm not going to jet down my bike and take a risk of burning a cylinder out. But the other example would be if your electrode, that ceramic piece down in there, is uh, all white, you know, like it's, like, like, uh, and, and what that would mean would uh, be that you're not getting enough fuel. And the danger that you have there is that you can actually burn a hole in your cylinders, or in your, in your pistons, excuse me, or you can have detonation and, and uh, your bike won't run right, or your four-wheeler, whatever you're dealing with. So you, and, and I like to read my plugs every so often just to make sure that everything's kind of right. So what you're looking for when you're reading plugs is this tannish brownish color with a clean plug. And uh, you can even hook it up to the spark plug and ground it, or to the wire and ground it. And uh, make sure that you've got a nice blue spark. So what you do when you're jetting is if you think you need a jet change, the first thing you should do is, is uh, take your bike or four-wheeler, whatever ATV you're running, take it out and uh, go as, just, just give her the, give her the shit, you know, take off and, and run it through all the gears and then shut it immediately off. And as soon as you shut it off, pull the plug out and read what your plug has done. Now the reason that I use this method is because it runs the carburetor and the motor through all the different, all the three different cycles within your carburetor. Pilot jet, needle jet, and main jet. And so it gives you a pretty good indicator of what's going on there. Now if you get back and you find that, or you pull your plug and you find that it's all black and wet, sooty like that, then that means that you're jetted too high. Now the first thing that I would try in that instance is to move down one jet size um, and, and then try it again. And you keep trying this until, until you get something right. Now if you move down a jet size and, and you don't come back up into your power range or you have problems or it stutters or whatever happens there, then you want to move to your needle jet. Now the way you want to adjust a needle jet, the first thing to try is to move that little clip on there. Now if you move that clip down, this clip right here, you move it to a no the next notch down, you're going to have this needle sitting a little bit higher and it's going to be letting more fuel in, and vice versa if you move this clip up a little bit. So that's the next thing to try. Now usually in that process you won't have to mess much with the uh, pilot jet, unless you find that your bike is fouling or won't idle or stalls really easy at low RPMs or, or just has no bottom end whatsoever. And then is, uh, you know, it's kind of the same deal except that uh, instead of running it through the ranges, what I usually do is is I put a plug or put, put my pilot jet in and uh, start up my bike and uh, let it idle for a bit, you know, one, two minutes, then shut it back off and pull your plug. Now at an idle, your plug is generally going to be a little bit more black is what I've found. Two strokes have a tendency of, uh, of, uh, of fouling plugs, just, just the way they are. They're not as efficient at low RPMs. Uh, a two stroke will actually work like a supercharged engine and will pick up power as you come up to the top end just because of the internal design. Now the other thing you can try if you're going to buy some parts 
is you can try a different slide. You know, if, if you're fouling at an idle and you can't get much effect out of your, out of your uh, pilot jet, you can try replacing a slide. Replace it with a smaller number. But um, what, what will happen when you start replacing slides and uh, di get different progressions on your needles, what will happen there is that you'll start seeing a change in how your, your ATV, your particular vehicle, comes up into the power range. You know, it, it, uh, where it might have had a lot of bottom end torque before and come up in real strong, if you change up your jets a little bit, it might, uh, it might uh, bog off the line, and then the minute you hit the power band, just be absolutely uncontrollable. That's, that's pretty much the way my, my Suzuki is. And I've jetted it that way because I kind of like it. It makes, makes it more fun to pop wheelies. It's just, but it also makes it really hard to climb hills. So you want to be careful of the jet changes or the changes in your needles or slides that you make because they will affect the whole range that you're running through in your, uh, in your dirt bike or four-wheeler, whatever. But the important thing to remember when you're, when you're thinking about changing jets is that you always want that nice brownish color. Read your plugs. If you read your plugs, they'll tell you everything you need to know about what your carburetor is doing or what you need to do with it to make it better. Now, just as a side note, some of you may be wondering, hey, how do I find my jet size? Well, it's as simple as this. Let me pull that pilot jet back out here. Now, on a pilot jet, what you're going to have is if you look right there below the threads you're gonna see a little number now you're probably not going to be able to see it in the camera but you'll see that little number that is you know on that on that jet now this particular jet is a number 40 now that would be way too big of a pilot jet for anything that I'm running and then on your needle jet what you're looking for is there's a little number on here right below those that set of grooves and that number tells you what size your needle jet is and what kind of a progression the taper has for letting fuel in as you pull your slide up and this particular needle is a 6d p10 so and you know i can't tell you specifically what that means as far as dimensions other than a you know a a P10 is a fairly large needle, or, or fairly large as far as letting fuel in. And then on your final one, your main jet is going to have a number right there on the very end. This one's all gunked up as you can see. And this is actually a 270 jet. You can see it right there on the very top of there. So you want to be careful not to mar those up if you're working on them because um, then you won't be able to read the numbers. And your pilot jets, all the same, you want to be careful not to mar those up. And all that takes to change those out is a screwdriver. <laughs> they sell special tools, but uh, I actually have taken a screwdriver and I cut it down to the perfect size to fit my pilot jets so that it sticks in there and doesn't give you a lot of slop because these uh, brass pilot jets are really, really easy to muck up. And then, then you're screwed. Now these things are really cheap. You know, you can buy these pilot jets for about two bucks a piece. You can buy these main jets that I've got here for uh, generally three to four. You know, I think I might have paid four ninety five. And there's a lot of places that'll give you a really good deal if you buy four or five of them at a time. So sometimes that's the best option to go. Now there's other options as far as doing them the redneck way and making them open them up. But I always like to have an extra stock of needles on hand, so I don't like to, uh, to have a needle that says one size and is really flowing another. So I hope that's told you guys everything you'd ever want to know about jetting carburetors. And uh, yeah, I wish you the best. You know what? More power to you. Put some pipes and some air filters on, jet them up, let me know what you find.